Well, if you think about things often enough, long enough, you'll find something that'll work. Uh, that uh, Costco tarp I cut down and I tapered a little bit. I took my scissors and, and tapered it down as I got down here so I didn't have such a big wad. And I was able to keep the grommet here and put a cord through it. I might put a bigger string through it, but I'm already, if I wanted to now, I have uh, pulled on the cord and it, it, it's loose and then I can go to the other end and uh, um, pull it back the other way. Get my mouth working again here. But uh, I ran out of shipping tape right about in here. I used the masking to kind of hold it down in a rubber band down here to and it's, I, I'm, I'm beginning to think now that I don't want this really tight. I want a little bit of looseness around the tube uh, because it'll uh, it'll shrink in when the glass goes around it. And I'm going to go get some uh, that nylon. I'm going to get another roll. I can go to my do-it center and pick up two of those uh, shipping things for a buck and then I'll get a uh, probably a roll of that uh, nylon reinforced tape and put maybe four four runs down it just to give it a little more I don't I, don't, I may not uh, this uh, this tarp is so heavy and, and strong for ripping that I think I'll be able to uh, put a uh, death grip hitch on that end on the tube and then uh, have maybe a heavier cord on this eye up here and the whole thing will come off and I think if I put enough of the shipping tape on the um, um, outside of it here that I might be able to fish a line through once I get the mask off and uh, Depending on how, if the mat, if the glass part, the glass fiberglass part, comes loose from the uh, um, tarp, uh, that's fine. But if not, I think I'll be able to feed a line through the the fiberglass tube and attach it to this eye at the top, and then pull it back through inside and, and collapse itself inward on the out, outside of or pull it out of the fiberglass. But we'll we'll see what happens when we get there. You know, it's a long road to hoe so far. Like I said, I guess at the close of the last one, uh, conundrum. I mean, I'm not too far into this that I, that I may not abandon it, but I'd like to uh, continue on if it's possible. I got to thinking, okay, with the sailboard masts, almost all, all the sailboard sails, are a slip on, you know, they just slip over the tube with a sleeve sewn into the, the luff of the sail. But with this thing, I need to put uh, fittings on. Uh, you know, I gotta get put the track on for the gooseneck and then the uh, those two little RL318s for the blocks for the lifting the throat, the luff of the mast or the sail, and then the, for the topping of the uh, gaff hole. And so I uh, I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? So I spent all morning at the hardware store looking at stuff and ways to go around it. And I thought, okay, well, I had one of these little inserts here, a small one, and then, it, you know, it doesn't really work. It just wiggles around, even on this thin wall. I mean, I, we know it's going to be thicker than what this is. And I thought, well, that's still not going to be right. So and then I got to thinking, I'm always thinking about this stuff as I'm out my walks every day or just sitting around looking out the window drinking coffee. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I need to put a plate inside this tube in order to drill into so I'll have something hard for the screws to uh, latch onto. So I found I had some uh, uh, banding tape from when I uh, ordered my uh, metal roof last year uh, to put on the barn. Um, I thought, well, maybe I can put that in there. So I took uh, the, uh, let me reset up here, I'll show you how I did it. Before we get into actually wanted to do it, uh, you can see this is one I've already uh, bent over. And I'll probably put, I'm going to do a test with this sample here too. I'm going to take one of these things and then put it down and, and glass some two inch cloth over the top of it to hold it in place and then it'll be wrapped again a little bit later, maybe tomorrow. 
uh, it's all been sanded. Uh, it's probably been over 72 hours, so I would have had to sand this anyway for the uh, System 3 uh, silver tip to go uh, bond to bond. Be wouldn't be a chemical bond, but it'd be a physical mechanical bond. So uh, I've got that in there, and it fits fits pretty tight. I need to make one uh, for the larger diameter down where the gooseneck. Uh, uh, track will be screwed in. It needs to be you know, a lot longer. So let me uh, set up here for what I'm doing. I got some some one inch conduit here. And I got my jaw horse here. I'll get it in place. This thing has been invaluable. And we'll just Just slowly back and forth. Getting a little bit of, I don't know if you can't see that in there, getting a little bit of an arc. Let's flip it over. Trust me, it's got pretty much the arc I need, and it fits fits pretty good. It's got needs some more more whacking, but this one was just a temp a test for you guys. I've already got the the other two one two made for where the RL three eighteen will fit on up here with the little blocks on it. So I'm make up something for the uh, track. A little side note here, I went and measured, took, this is 16 inches long, I took it in and on my, I got a little uh, food scale, it's very accurate, and it's three and a quarter inches, three and a quarter inches, three and a quarter ounces for 16 inches, so it's about 2.44, something like that, a foot, but this is half the thickness and this is also at the top end, so the base is going to be, you know, bigger around, so I'm thinking maybe seven, eight pounds, maybe less than that. Won't know until we get done, but uh, yeah, just wanted to give you an idea. Now I've got to put a center line on it and I made another little, another little sample and I barbed the end and filed them down. So now I'm going to um, wrap this in some two inch tape and uh, maybe a couple wraps and uh, maybe down near the end here where I can cut the end off and see what the final uh, final um, thickness is going to be. Uh, I was debating whether or not when I do the layup is maybe do two wraps, wet that out, put on these, you know, mix up some gel magic and then put these down uh, and then put some uh, two inch uh, tape across the top and then come back and wrap it the next day. That'll give me uh, two days and then with another four layers of glass and then the sleeving. Chuck's going to send me some sleeving. So um, then we'll have maybe hopefully our full thickness and then this will be embedded in it. And then when I drill through, uh, should be able to see, you know, the black through the uh, the clear. Uh, you can kind of see it through. I don't know if you can see it through here, but you can. I'll make sure that I put a, a center line on it. Well, I have a test section done. I don't know if you can see it here or not. Here's the little plate underneath. It's under two wraps, one this way and one going back the other direction. So now I have six layers of glass. So let me go ahead and mix up some silver tip and we'll wet this out and see what we get. Well, I'll do some wet out here. I'm just mixed up a little bit and I'm going to use an acid brush this time so I can Save my toothbrushes for the big jobs. The big jobs. This is one of the things I like about toothbrushes, they don't leave hairs behind.
I still think I may do this over a period of days. Maybe two wraps of the tape. Let that cure and then see if I can pull it off the mandrel. Boy, I think I need about five times as much epoxy as I'm going to need here. And then put on these plates and some tape on top of them. And then, depending on how many days, give it a sand and then put on the last four layers of tape and the sleeving. Or chuck it all and say to hell with it and go down and buy the aluminum tubing. I have a couple designs I want to be working on right now. One of them is the, uh, I'm calling it the East Mercy duck punt. If you see on YouTube, there's these guys going around, these cute little duck punts, sailing around with an Optimus sail. But their boats are kind of, or the design is kind of clunky, and I think I could update it to my style of stitch and blue. We'll come back. Well, I've got it all wet out, and I went around with a A little bit of sponge to suck up some of the excess resin. I've got a lot of glass surface showing, so it's it's not going to be resin rich. So we'll see what that does. I'm half tempted to put another while it's still wet and I got more epoxy, put some more tape on top of it. I may just go ahead and do that. We'll come back. Had an old piece of three inch tape about that long, so it comes down over here and over here, so it went about halfway around. Well, almost more than half. So uh, that gives me a little extra layer on top. Big thing is how much this is riding in here. It almost might behoove me to. Uh, well, I'd have to find some way to glue the, the plate onto the glass and then uh, let that cure and then, well, gel magic would probably do it, and then fare around the edges with some fillet material. I think this will work though. We'll see. I'll do it. I'll do a drill test and uh, put some weight on it with some screws and see what we have. That'll be tomorrow.